The absence of imperial rule made the city a dangerous place. But it also transformed the social and cultural life of Berlin. Heavy censorship had been lifted, and as people fought on the streets, Berlin danced to the international craze of jazz and cabaret in a way that no other city on the planet did. The craze extended from the popular tunes of Brecht and Weil to the darkest and most experimental depths of Berlin's artistic world. On a sultry July day, in 1928, a small funeral took place here in this graveyard in the district of Neukölln. But those attending were about as strange a bunch as anyone could wish for. Journalists and hermaphrodites, film directors and prostitutes, doctors and transvestites. They were all here to say goodbye to a woman whose drug-fueled life and early death had come to embody the Berlin of the 1920s, roaring and toxic. The woman's name was Anita Berber. She was a movie actress and a dancer, famed for her erotic modern dance numbers. She danced at the notorious El Dorado Club, in what is now an organic supermarket. People would once sit in sweaty thrall to Berber's gyrations. Berber was a bisexual, addicted to cocaine, morphine, and heroin. Someone who wouldn't shy at stooping to prostitution to fund her habits. Hard to believe, but this place was once the center of Berlin's creative scene. Another artist, Otto Dix, captured the mood in a stunning portrait of Berber. And his rendering of the club's transvestite clientele. The sexual underworld of Berlin in the 1920s represented not just a way of life or, for that matter, a good night out. Like everything else in this city at that time, it embodied a political idea. Magnus Hirschfeld, a Berlin sexologist who'd been much censored during the early decades of the century, found new freedom during the Weimar Republic. Hirschfeld was even given a royal palace in which to house his Institute for Sexual Research. The Federal Chancery of Germany now occupies its site. Hirschfeld believed in what he called the third or intermediate sex. The notion that a human being could naturally be something other than a man or a woman. He theorized that between what he termed absolute man and absolute woman, there existed at least 43 million possible sexual types of human being, bespoke sexuality. According to his experiments, these types depended on physical characteristics, hair growth, gait, perspiration, and sex drive. Hirschfeld himself was gay, and he argued that since sexual differences were determined by nature, homosexual practice had to be equally natural. It was the kind of logic that made him into a prime target for the likes of Josef Goebbels and his Nazi rabble-rousers. Not that that stopped Hirschfeld from lobbying for the repeal of the law against homosexual practice. He was perhaps the world's first political gay rights campaigner, a fact which the city he loved has never forgotten. 